What's up you guys, some Maxime Symmetry here to bring you guys the first video and I'm sure will be several videos about talking about the new Gravekeepers. I've already made a video uh, several days ago, probably more than a week ago, about the new support that was coming out, that was coming out through cards uh, in the in the newest set, uh, Legacy of the Valent, which were Gravekeepers Disciteful, uh, Necro Valley Tomb, and Necro Valley Shrine, as well as uh, Gravekeepers Ambusher. Uh, these were the main cards I focused on in that video and I wanted to uh, as soon as these cards became like legal on DN or YGO Pro, I want to make a video on them. And of course, DN beat YGO Pro to it. Um, I only have the one for MacBook, so I don't know if it's updated yet. But this was the first version of the deck I wanted to put together. I spent um, about an hour or so trying to piece the the deck together the best way I could. I tested a couple things. I talked to a couple of my friends who also wanted to build the deck. I tried to find the right balance of ratios that I could use to start with the deck. I cut some things from the main deck, added some things in, and just wanted to put this together for you as a skeleton kind of like uh like a prototype for the deck. So this is what I came up with so far. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of change, and I'm sure a lot of you will have good suggestions. The point of this video is for you guys to see like a general idea of how I feel the new support will help the Gravekeeper deck, and I hope that you guys will give me some, uh, you know, some help, some critiques, anything to make the deck better, because it's definitely one of the decks I'm going to play uh, next format for sure, like guaranteed no matter what, just because I love Gravekeeper so much and I'm glad to see them have support. And uh, yeah, so I'll just get into the deck real quick and just explain like my choices. So starting off with the monsters, I decided to only run one Ambusher. The reason being is that this card is good. It has 1700 attack with Necro Valley. It's, um, you know, a 22 beater, which is nice. However, I felt that its effect, as good as it was, being able to... Um, you know, get add a Necro Valley back from your graveyard was pretty good. Um, the card does have to be flipped face up, and it does have to be sent from the field to the graveyard. So the main thing is flipping it face up and getting it off the board. So it being blaster pop while face down would suck. But I mean, I don't know how much that's gonna happen. Um, so I only wanted to run one just to be safe. I don't really like the fact that it has zero defense. It can't really hold on its own if you're trying to stall with the card if you don't really have any monsters. But I chose to just run one. Uh, that could change, but I think for now I'm good with one. I chose to still run the one Gravekeeper's Assailant. I've always liked this card. This card has gotten me out of a lot of problematic situations back in the day. This was like an auto out to She and not an out to a lot of monsters. Good against Drago Sack Tokens. Flip them to attack mode. Beat over them. Um, so I felt that one was just fine. I don't know if it'll remain in the main deck, but I feel that I will still run it. I'm still running Triple Command it. This could cut to two, and a lot of people have been asking me why I still chose to run three. The reason being is these new support cards require Necro Valley, and I feel that having the ultimate resources to Necro Valley is really, really important. So that's why I went with three. Plus, like I've said in many, many videos in the past, 2100 under Necro Valley is not bad at all. Uh, th I went on to still run three Descendant. It's one of my favorite cards in the deck. The ability to just pop stuff is very important. I feel you need to max out at three for the fact that Bottomless is still around, other cards are still around. Uh, and with no priority, you need to be able to get Descendant off, so having all three copies is really important. Some people might run two. I mean, eventually I might run two, I'm not sure, but for the main engine of the deck, I still wanted to run three. On to the new sport. I'm only running two Disciple. I feel two Disciple is the perfect number. Basically, this card needs to be destroyed by battle by an opponent's attacking monster and sent to the graveyard, and then I'm able to special summon a Gravekeeper monster from my deck in face down defense position. So basically, you use this card to search out Spy or search out any of the other Gravekeepers you need. Um, it does add a lot of support to the deck. Uh, I like it a lot. It's also a level 3, so rank 3 has become a little more versatile in this deck. Even though they're not the ideal play, I still feel it's a really good card, and it really does help. Uh, the deck in the long run. Uh, that's one of the main reasons I'm only running two recruiter. Now a lot of people are going to frown on this and say you have to run three recruiter. I thought so at first myself, but I felt that two recruiter, two disciple to just start out would be a good ratio. It would make it so that I would see recruiter, I would see disciple, and I wouldn't see too many of them. And I'd be able to launch off the recruiters with descendant if need be. And I'd be able to pretty much search everything. Recruiter will search everything, and disciple will search spy. So everything is searchable now in the decks. So I felt that two and two was a good ratio. Show. That might change though if I cut a command it to put in uh, a third recruiter. Uh, I'll see how things go. And then, of course, the three mandatory copies of Gravekeeper Spy, the best card in the deck. That's it for the monsters. Like all Gravekeeper decks, I like to keep it to a low monster count. I feel that. Higher monster counts can be really bad because like you'll get hands full of monsters and you won't really be able to do anything. So having low monsters being able to draw into those monsters is really good. Plus you run Groove Creepers Stella, so you're always able to get cards back. 
on other spells, uh, one Book of Moon staple, the two Stele staple. I'm running two Typhoon. Originally, I had no Typhoons in the deck, and I thought to myself, that's kind of ignorant not to run Typhoon. I feel that Typhoon's really important for the fact that people are, do, a lot of decks do run field cards. Zombies have a field card now through Vampires. Dragons have Ravine. A lot of other decks are running fields, you know, if you run into Medulches or something. So I feel like Typhoon is just really important to stop those, as well as stop key cards. Like, you can lose really hard to, like, a Royal Decree or something that could really just get in your way. So I feel uh, Typhoon. Typhoon was good, and I wanted to just run two copies in the main deck. Uh, the three, Staple, Necro Valley, you definitely need to run three now. Some people used to run only two. I feel you need three for the fact that these new support cards require Necro Valley, so having Necro Valley at hand is really, really important. Uh, On to the newer support cards. I'm only running one Necro Valley Shrine. Originally, I had two in place of uh, one of the Typhoons. And I decided to cut it to one for the fact that this does require you to have Necro Valley and a Gravekeeper, which isn't really hard. However, it you know it's not as great as a lot of people think. I think it's a uh, you know a good version of Vanity's Emptiness for this deck, and I like the fact they don't have the main Emptiness. I think Shrine's just a better alternative since Decree can shut down a lot of things. So I feel Shrine is really good. I could actually see myself going to two. Actually, I feel that if I build the deck properly, I can make it to where I'll always have Necro Valley and a Gravekeeper. But for now, I like just one Shrine. But that could definitely change. Uh, three Staple Duality make the deck consistent. I cut a lure. I don't really want to banish any of my monsters. I don't feel that. I feel my monster count is so low, I just really don't want to run it. I'm not sure if that'll change, but I feel 3 Duality keeps my consistency there, and it makes it so I don't lose any monsters, so I'm able to use all of them to the best of their abilities. And then I still run the One Royal Tribute, because this card's broken, and I don't care what anyone says, I'm still going to run the One Royal Tribute, because this card single-handedly can take out your opponent's hand, and it's not so much the fact that you can take out their hand, it's the fact you can see their hand, and that's really important in this game. Knowledge is power, especially in this game. That's it for the spells, under the traps, uh, one bottomless, one compulse. Uh, Double D Prison, I was hesitant to run these, to be honest. I originally just had the two Mirror Force, I had three Fiendish Chains, and I had two Shrines. Um, but D Prison is good for the fact that Stardust Spark Dragon's a bitch. Like, seriously, that card's a real pain to deal with, and I feel that outside of Book of Moon and other cards, you really need to be able to get that card off the field, so I feel uh, D Prison is just a really good choice. Plus, it's not bad against a lot of other decks, you know, if they're running Stardust, they're running something that could be a problem. Banishing it is always better. Uh, sometimes in destroying it. So I still like it at two. Uh, two Fiendish Chain. I originally was running three. Got a little clumpy. I think two is fine. Uh, might go to three. Might leave it at two. I'll see how things go. Fiendish Chain isn't that good right now, but this is for the new format, you guys. So I'm just basing this on the new format and how I feel Gravekeepers will probably run for the most part. Uh, the two Mirror Force, mass, mass removal is really important. And then on to the last new support card, the two Necro Valley Tomb. So this is basically our Infernity Barrier for the deck. I didn't want to run three. Way too cloggy. You need to have Necro Valley and a Gravekeeper on the field again. That's why I said Necro Valley is very important, and getting your monsters is very important. Um, Tomb is important because you're able to just negate pretty much anything, and I mean, that's just broken. You know, we don't have Solemn Judgment anymore, so this is the closest thing, and it is, like I said, an Infernity, or Infernity Barrier, so it's just great. So I'm only running two copies of that. So you guys can see the newest support I've added is the two copies of Necro Valley Tomb, two copies of Disciple, one copy of Ambusher, and one copy of Shrine. I feel that those are the ratios I'm going to stick with just for now. As the deck progresses and I get the cards in real life, I'll be doing more real profiles and talking about how I feel the ratios change to remain the same depending on how the deck uh, performs. The last two traps are one warning, one torrential staple in the deck. So, uh, deck is 40 cards. I would not run into more than 40 cards. You want to see your cards. You want to see them soon. I almost considered running Upstart in the deck, but then it just I felt that I can't really OTK with this deck, so if I give them extra 1,000 life points, it could hinder me more than help me, but I mean, that could change. Because I do believe in uh, in Pat's upstart theory, making a deck forty, making a deck thirty seven cards uh, makes the deck faster and more consistent. But for now, I like the main deck as it is. Uh, and here are just cards I didn't uh, like. These two cards, I wanted to put a third typhoon. I want to run dark hole, but I felt that I could do without them for the fact that descendant can pop stuff. So that's your removal and. Um, Dark Hole, like, I really don't want to clear my board. If I clear my board of anything that's not a recruiter, I kind of take a real minus because not being able to, um, you know, get anything off of Disciple if it doesn't be destroyed by battle hurts a lot. So um, I decided to keep the Dark Hole in the side deck or somewhere else. I'm not sure what's going to happen with it. And these were just cards, like, if I was putting together a side deck, Iron Wall and DNA, deal with Spellbooks, deal with Dragons. Uh, I haven't built a side deck yet, so it's kind of irrelevant. Uh, extra deck, kind of the same thing. I kind of just threw in as many Rank 4s as I could think of. Basically, you can only make rank 4s and rank 3s in this deck, so I just include the, the important ones, Dweller, Dire Wolf. Uh, I threw Nightmare and Thanatos in here. You run Dark Monsters, so, you know, why not? You have the room. Uh, as new XYZs come out, I'm sure these cards will change. Cowboy steals games. Pearl's big against Ophion. 
Um, for threes, you have the Levier. For fours, you still have Maze Stroke. Uh, I like uh, Mech Equip An Engineer. I really like this card a lot. Um, Black Ship. Of course, you got to run the Key Beetle. Key Beetle Lock your Necro Valley. Really important. Key Beetle Lock your uh, Shrine. Really important, too. Uh, Crazy Box. You ever get Skill Drain or something? I'm sure I'll slide the Virus or something like that. Uh, best card ever because it's the best card ever. Um, plus, you're able to target defense position, monster change, phase up attack. So, you know, you can do cool tricks with Spy and, Pap and Pappy because Pappy's awesome. Uh, one Zen Main's uh, another rank three there. I think it's just really good. Stall for time. And Zen Meister because you can do other cool combos with Spy. Uh, but that's it, you guys. It's the first uh, video of many, I'm sure, of the new Gravekeeper deck. This is just my first prototype. You know, don't be too judgmental. I wanted to keep it pretty simple for you guys. I wanted to just test this deck. I've been testing it for a couple hours. It's been doing pretty well. Uh, Disciple's really good. They're attacking into a lot. It's getting me Spy, and then I'm going off with Spy next turn. And um, having Spy phase up, and then having... Um, the Necro Valley tuned to negate crazy stuff like Mirror Force or Bottomless or anything like that when I summon Descendant or uh, Recruiter while Necro Valley's up has been really, really helpful. So I like the deck a lot. But anyways, please leave your thoughts below. If you like the deck, thumbs it up. Please comment what changes you would make, cards you would add, cards you would not add. And uh, just let me know, and I'll definitely be making more videos like this. And as soon as I get the real cards in real life, as soon as the set's released, I'll make a real life profile for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thumbs it up, and thank you for watching. Team, JK, Team GK is all the way.